Hi friends, Miss Christy here, and I am so excited to be together again cooking in the kitchen. Today we are learning how to make chocolate pretzel banana bites. This is just a fun snack to make. We get to slice a banana, melt some chocolate, and we end up with a snack that's a little bit crunchy and sweet, and it just tastes good. We're gonna have fun making this together today, and I'm so glad you're here. Now, the first step to cooking and working in the kitchen is to wash our hands. While I wash my hands with soap and warm water for at least 20 seconds, let's go over the ingredients and supplies that you'll need to gather to cook along today. The ingredients you need are one banana, one third cup chocolate chips, half a teaspoon of coconut oil, 20 mini pretzels, and one tablespoon of peanut or almond butter, which is optional. The supplies you need are a cutting board, a plate, liquid measuring cup, one third cup dry measuring cup, one tablespoon, half a teaspoon, a butter knife, a spoon, and parchment paper. Okay, great. My hands are clean and your hands are clean. We've gathered our ingredients and supplies. So let's get started making our chocolate banana pretzel bites. Like I said, this is just a fun snack to make. It doesn't take very long, um, but it's just fun to put together. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure your cutting board is in front of you. And then I'm actually just gonna take my plate and my parchment paper and set it next to me. Cause that's where we're gonna kind of put together our little bites and put them on the plate. But um, the parchment paper, again, is optional, I guess, if you don't wanna have it. It just helps so that when we pop them in the fridge, the, um, when they're done being assembled, that it doesn't stick to your plate. So that's why I have parchment paper. So if you have it, just kind of spread it out over your plate. So it kind of covers your plate a bit to the best of your ability. Um, and then we'll start assembling them. So have your cutting board in front of you and grab your banana, one banana, and we're gonna peel it. And then we are going to slice 10 slices of banana. So this snack makes 10 little bites. So we kinda just need to slice 10 chunks of banana off. I'm just gonna cut the ends off because they're a little bit round and it would kinda be hard to put between a pretzel. All right, so you wanna make sure that they are about the same thickness the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. So just going to slice 10 off here. And you can kinda of see how I'm making them not super thick. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm gonna eat this banana, this piece later, so I'm just gonna set that off to the side. You don't wanna throw it away. You can eat that. All right, I have 10 slices of banana, and now I'm going to take my 20 mini pretzels. And again, this makes 10 bites because we have a top and a bottom. It's like a sandwich. And you're just going to take a pretzel, take a slice of banana, and then put another pretzel on top. And this is why we want them to be mini pretzels and you want them to be plain pretzels. I guess if you had like the cinnamon sugar, that would actually be kind of good too. But if you have any other cup of flavor like honey mustard or anything, not gonna taste great. So make sure you're using plain pretzels or like a sweeter pretzel. And you're just gonna sandwich your banana in between there and then set them on your plate. Um, Cause we're gonna dunk them in a minute. So again, we're just gonna pretzel, banana, pretzel. We're gonna do this 10 times to make our 10 bites. But I do wanna show you that 
there is an optional step. So when I li listed off the ingredients, I said that you could do a tablespoon of peanut butter or a tablespoon of almond butter, and it was optional because if you wanted to add one more flavor to the snack, this is what you would do. You'll take your peanut butter and your one tablespoon, so it's the one that says one TBSP. Again, this whole step is optional. If you can't have peanut butter or almond butter, um, definitely skip it. It just kind of adds another flavor. So I scooped out a tablespoon of peanut butter, or actually this is almond butter that I'm using. And if you put a pretzel down, you can kind of just take a banana. And this gets a little bit messy, but that's okay, because cooking can be messy, but it also kind of makes it fun. You just kind of dunk it and then kind of put it on your pretzel. So it's just another layer of flavor. And it does kind of help the pretzel stay on a little bit better, so you could kind of dunk both sides too. I set this down, you could kind of dunk it, flip it over if you wanted to, and dunk it again. It doesn't have to look perfect. With cooking, things don't have to look perfect, they just have to taste good, right? So kind of. So there you go, so that's the option. I just wanted to show you if you wanted to put peanut butter or almond butter or like a sun butter in between your pretzels, um, just know that that's an option too. I'm gonna rinse my fingers real quick. that one here. And now I'm just gonna go back to kind of assembling our chocolate, or our bananas and our pretzels. And I'm just setting them on their plate because that's where they're gonna sit while we melt our chocolate and get ready to dunk them. With the snack, with slicing the banana and putting them on the pretzel, it, you know, it can get a little tricky. Sometimes the banana gets a little slippery and it slides out. You just have to be patient with yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect, like I said, and it's just supposed to be fun. So if it gets a little, if a pretzel breaks, grab another one. If your banana falls off, just stop and put it back on. It is okay. All right, so last one here. You can kind of see why I'm using a bigger plate because you want to have enough room on your plate to fit our 10 little bites. But now we have them our little pretzel banana sandwiches. So you can kind of put your pretzels to the side, we're done with those. Now we need to melt our chocolate. So I have just regular chocolate chips, you could use mini chocolate chips. Um, mine are actually the kind that don't have like any dairy or anything in like that, so if you have that, if you can't have dairy and use the chocolate chip that's dairy free, um, that's an option too. So just any type of chocolate chip that you use or you have in your house, we need one third cup. So put your chocolate chips in front of you and grab your one third measuring cup, because that's what we're gonna scoop and measure. And then set your liquid measuring cup right in front of you, because we're actually gonna melt it right in here. So chocolate chips, we're gonna measure one third cup. Perfect. And then dump it right into your liquid measuring cup. And put those to the side, because you're done with that. And now we're gonna grab our coconut oil and our half a teaspoon. We need a half a teaspoon of coconut oil. What does this do? When we put this in our chocolate and we melt it, it just helps thin it out a little bit. Um, sometimes if you just melt it without some type of like a coconut oil or maybe a grapeseed oil, it can stay a little thick. So the coconut oil helps to keep our chocolate thin and dunkable. So measure a half a teaspoon and just put it right in there. You can set that to the side because we won't use that again. And now we need to microwave this for 35 seconds. And then we stir it and we mark it, microwave it for 35 more seconds. So let's grab our spoon and take our chocolate to the microwave and put it in for the first 35 seconds. All right, so the first 35 seconds are up. My timer just went off, or my microwave just went off, so I'm now gonna take it out, and we just wanna give it a gentle stir, okay? So it started to melt a little bit, but there's still a lot of chocolate chips in there, so we can definitely tell that it's not ready to dunk anything into yet. So, just trying to get most of these chocolate chips off here, which is why we use clean fingers and hands. Let's put this back in for 35 more seconds and then we'll give it a stir and make sure that it looks good and then we'll keep going.
All right, the second 35 seconds is just ended. So let me take it out and see how it looks. And we are gonna have to stir it again and just kind of stir it slowly. If you stir it really fast, it might cool down too quickly. So I'm just giving it a slow stir. And you wanna make sure that all of the chocolate chips are melted. You don't wanna see any big chunks in there, but this looks pretty good. And as you stir it, sometimes um, if you see like one or two chocolate chips in there, it'll melt it as we stir it. So this looks ready to dump. I'm gonna walk it back over to my workspace and keep going here. All right, this is where it does get a little bit messy. So you have to be okay that your fingers are gonna get full of chocolate and it's not gonna look perfect and beautiful, but it's gonna taste good. So this is just the fun part. Take your, I'm gonna move my knife to the side because I'm done with that. You're gonna wanna keep your plate next to you because we're basically gonna dunk them and put them back on this plate. Then they go in the fridge for about 10 minutes to harden up and then they're done. So we need to dunk them. And this is where maybe the bananas pops out or the pretzel breaks and it's okay. You just have to be a little bit patient. We're only gonna dunk half of them. So I like to pinch it in the middle and just kind of give it a little bit of a dunk and shake it off a little bit. And then I put it right back on the plate. Move this a little bit closer. So just kind of go slow, because like I said, you want to pinch it in the middle so your banana doesn't pop out. And dunk. Oops, see? My pretzel fell off and that's okay. I'm just gonna flip it over, put it back on. I've got a little napkin here in case your fingers get too chocolatey, you can kind of just wipe them off but that's okay. It's a fun snack and you just have to be patient with yourself. So we're carefully grabbing all of our 10 bites here, pinching them in the middle a little bit and giving them a dunk into our chocolate. Like I said, once this is done, we're gonna put it into the fridge, the refrigerator for 10 minutes and I will set a time, 10 minute timer just because I'm gonna be excited to eat them and I wanna know exactly when 10 minutes is up. So I'll set a 10 minute timer and that way when they're in the refrigerator, they're getting a little bit hard and when we go to eat them, they'll perfectly stay together. Because right now if you ate them, this chocolate's still warm and it would kind of slide all around and not be super easy to eat. But when we put them in the fridge for 10 minutes, then they harden up and they become this perfectly poppable yummy snack. All right, so I've just got a couple more to dunk here. And if you your chocolate starts to get towards the bottom, you can kind of tilt your measuring cup a little bit, and that way your chocolate flows to one side, and then you can just dunk them in the side. This one I'm dunking right now is the one that had almond butter on it, and it does stay together a little bit easier because that almond butter is kind of like a glue for the pretzel. So if you do like almond butter or peanut butter and you wanna try that, it makes it a little bit easier to dunk them because it stays together a little bit better. But I also, I like it with, I've tried it with peanut butter and without peanut butter and they're both good. So it's really just your preference. And when you cook for yourself in the kitchen, you get to make those kind of choices. All right, last one. And if you have leftover chocolate in here, slice up an apple, take the rest of your banana, dunk it in. That's what I do. I don't like to throw it away. Um, I'll definitely dunk something in that later. But here they are. And like I said, they're kind of just half dunked. It's not a ton of chocolate flavor for this snack. It's just a little bit of sweetness. Um, and then you still get the crunchy pretzel. We need to put this in the refrigerator for 10 minutes to let it harden. So I'm gonna put it in, set a 10 minute timer, and then we will take them out and see how they look. All right, friends, it's been 10 minutes and I just took out our chocolate banana pretzel bites and they're here on the plate that we had them in the fridge on. And now at this point, I'm just gonna put them on a different plate because I'm not gonna eat them all at once. So I'm just gonna take a couple here and they've hardened a little bit. You can kind of see how cute are these. So I'm just gonna put a couple on my plate here. And one thing I do wanna mention is if you don't eat them all right away, you could pop them back in the fridge, like put them in a lid with a container um, or put them in a container with a lid 
And you can keep whatever you don't eat right away in their fridge, but I would just like a day at the most. This has fresh fruit, so it's got a banana in there. It's not gonna stay good very long. Um, so I would recommend you know eating a couple, maybe putting them back in there for a few hours and finishing them later or sharing them with a friend or a family member. Um, but here we go. With just a few ingredients, we were able to make this fun little snack. Um, so I do hope you try and make it or try and make it again. And when you do, like I always say, let me know how it goes. I love getting to hear from you. You can leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any questions. You can even send me a picture of how your chocolate banana pretzel bites turned out. I would love to get to see them. And maybe we'll get to share it on next week's episode. Now, speaking of next week, on next week's episode, which is episode 21, we are learning how to make no-bake energy balls. No-bake meaning we don't have to use our oven, we don't even use the microwave, we just put a few ingredients in a bowl and we roll out these perfectly poppable bites. In order to cook along and make those no-bake energy balls next week, these are the ingredients that you'll need to have in your kitchen. One half cup plus two tablespoons of old-fashioned oats, one fourth cup peanut or almond butter, one fourth cup mini chocolate chips, three tablespoons of real maple syrup, and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Well friends, our time together today is almost over. It went by so fast. I hope you had fun making these chocolate banana pretzel bites. I know I did, and I already can't wait to cook together again next time. But before you say goodbye to this episode, make sure to click subscribe if you haven't already. You just have to click the little picture of me in the corner. That way you don't miss next week's episode. It'll be out on Friday, and I'll see you then. Bye, friends.